friends, and special guests. I proudly present Eckstein's class of 1995. Good evening. We are very pleased to have you join us on this very special occasion honoring the 1995 graduating 8th grade students of Eckstein. On behalf of the staff of Eckstein, I want to congratulate each of you in the 1995 graduating class, as well as your parents and families for your scholastic efforts and successes to date. You have been a wonderful group of students who have carried on Eckstein's tradition of excellence. I would like to pay special tribute at this time to two teachers who will not be with us next year. Eddie Bedoya and Dick Bone, after devoting years of service to shaping the lives of hundreds of young adults such as yourself are retiring. For every child they have taught, they have taught a generation. And it was this high regard that we not only express our regrets at seeing each of them leave, but more important, share their enthusiasm in the progress and significant contributions they have made in this community and hope they will and have instilled in us for the upcoming future. They are indeed two outstanding educators who will be very hard to replace. To each of our graduates, we give you the charge of continuing your education as far as your mind and other resources will take you. It is your responsibility to make the most of the many educational opportunities and experiences that await you. Are we ready to go? One of our young ladies is 
Karen Williams. She's not here. She has a uh, way running on the ADU track meet this weekend. But our other young lady is Amelia Moore. Is Amelia, would you stand please? Amelia, stand here. The young man that received our local, the King Award, is Kevin Powell. Would you stand, Kevin? Teacher to receive the water is Ms. Profilate. Where are you? I think she's upstairs. Would you stand, Ms. Profilate? Sure, responsible. Her attitude is cooperative and helpful in class. April is a solid student with dependable organizational skills. She is common, cooperative, and friendly to others. April was the number one choice of the eighth grade staff. Teachers describe him as an excellent student and writer with integrity. His work is constantly high quality. Clyde is a special person and a wonderful student. Clyde won the Lynx Award in fifth grade, and I believe so did April, um, at Sacteria. He was elected to Early Scholars Outreach Program, and Clyde uh, is, like, loves to draw, and he likes to do stand-up comedy. Congratulations. of one boy and one girl from the 8th grade class are chosen to receive the, the Seymour Kaplan Humanitarian Award. Seymour Kaplan is a great honor to receive. It is awarded to individuals who demonstrate a genuine compassion, concern, and love for other people. Mr. Kaplan was accepting of differences of Okay. Mr. Kaplan was accepting of differences of other people. He spent his life extending his hand to people Together, and he would go the extra mile to help his neighbor. The two students selected by Exxon, this is not supposed to be funny, the, stu the two students selected by Exxon to receive the Seymour Kaplan Award exemplify these principles. They are individuals who demonstrate. about her. Erin Williams is well liked by peers and staff. She is sensitive, caring, and sincere. Erin is conscientious about her own responsibilities and her attitude is cooperative and helpful in class. Erin is happy, poised, and always willing to assist with school tasks. Erin, in addition to bringing strong academics, demonstrates excellent leadership skills in class and school activities. Erin is a fine person and a great representative of the values of Seymour Kaplan. And Laura Star Dunmark. Recently, she was also the consumer editor for Homo Television. Her education includes a Bachelor of Arts degree in Communications and a Master's degree in Business Administration. Her special talent for reporting has led her to receive such awards as Outstanding Young Woman of America, the Woman of Achievement, a Leadership and Communications Award from the International Toastmasters Organization, and an Emmy Award. Although this is only a brief summary of the awards she has won, it proves how much of an impact she has on subjects that strike her interest. And here she is, Connie Thompson. I heard that short comment. Never said it. I'm very pleased to share this exciting evening with you. Before we get started, I have two presents, actually three. Walking up the street, I saw a red Audi 5000 WQU800 with the lights on. If it's yours, I hope it's 
Batteries not just two. Secondly, I've been watching the students up here sitting like maybe they were on the firing range. And I bet you'd love to just stand up for a moment and get your legs. So stand up real quick and then sit down. My final present. I saw some people looking at this paper saying, oh my God, I hope that's not her speech. <laughs> so we'll just throw this part out and cut it down to three pages. <laughs> it is really an honor to be here today. Um, our speaking bureau tells us information about speaking engagements. And on the sheet that I had, it said that there would be a thousand people. And I've spoken at middle school graduations before, so I said, yeah, right. No way. And I was mentioning this to a friend who said, oh, Connie, you don't know X. They have got the most popular school in the city. They've got the most involved community of parents around. And if you go expecting anything short of a thousand people, you're in for a surprise. So I applaud all of you and all of you for making Eckstein such a wonderful school and such a great reputation. Yeah. You're kind of bad standing with my back. You guys are the honorees and we have our backs to you, so excuse me if I turn around from time to time and talk to them instead of all of you. You know, at graduation, everybody talks about the future and you hear this at college graduation. The president talked about it, Tom Brokaw talked about it at the University of Washington. Talking about the future. Your future is ahead of you. You are the future. And I think that's important. But tonight, I'd like all of us to think about the past. It really has more to do with our past than what we don't know about the lives ahead. And what got me thinking about that is this last week when almost all of America, not to mention the world, turned its attention to this man nobody would ever heard of before named Scott O'Grady. Who's heard of Scott O'Grady? Captain Scott O'Grady. Air Force Captain Scott O'Grady. Okay, I was hoping that you Marie, would raise your hand because I'd like you to come up for a moment and help me out. And since I don't want you to be alone, why don't we have the young man next to you? Let's see, that would be Kevin. Come on. Scott O'Grady, can, do you remember who Scott O'Grady is? Can you tell us? Um, he is the Air Force pilot who was shot down in Bosnia and he survived for six days hiding. Now, do you remember how he did that? Uh, there, there was one thing about how he managed to survive and everybody just said, oh my God. Do you remember what that was? Eating bugs. He survived by eating bugs. Now, And he's had lunch with the president and he's been to the Pentagon. 
all because he survived. Now, I think that while Scott O'Grady was laying there in the bushes in the dark eating bugs and grass, he probably thought a little bit about the future life, will I ever get out of here? But I suspect that he thought a whole lot more about what have I learned and what do I know that's going to help me get out of this place alive. That's all about our past. And I think that even though you and I have never been in situations quite so dramatic as getting shot down in a plane over Bosnia, that most of us practice those same kind of strategies every day. And I know that a lot of you have done a great deal of practicing those strategies. And I think you should consider yourself a hero. Let me turn around a little bit. Because I found out that some of you have come from different countries. Some of you came from different countries without your parents to pursue a goal of education and personal freedom. And in your long, young lives, you've survived, you've managed to do that, and you're successful. I found out that some of you have had a really tough time sticking with your goals because of long illness and death of a parent. That's real tough, but you did it anyway. I think that's survival. Some of you are flourishing even though things at home aren't going too well. And some of you had to learn a whole new language before you could even begin to learn anything else. That's not easy. Some of you have had to make some real tough choices and risk losing some of your friends because their goals weren't the same as your goals and you wanted to finish school so that you could be here tonight and go on to high school. Now after listening to Captain O'Grady this week, I think he'd be the first to agree with me that accomplishments like this are no less important and what he went through during those six days in Bosnia. So I say you give yourselves a hand for being heroes. As you look to your futures, whatever you're going to do, I hope that you will always take time to look back at what you've already done. Adults get so busy looking ahead to what they're going to do that they forget to do this. But I will guarantee you that if you look back and think, even in the last week, what did I accomplish this week? I, I passed a test. I got my desk cleaned up. Sometimes I don't make that mistake again. Because those are the things that are going to make you successful later in your life. So that you do have a future. And keep in mind that heroes are made long before anyone knows who they are. Long before they even suspect that they're going to be heroes. And a lot of times it's because of the things that we take for granted, like education and commitment and determination. Before I go, I have a few words of advice for, for all of you. These were passed on from a parent of someone who also is graduating from middle school and start high school. My colleague Bob Bronson offers these words of wisdom. To the parents, good luck. <laughs> and hang in there. Sometime between the junior and senior year of high school, the kids are going to figure out that you do know a little bit about what you're talking about. And kids, as soon as you figure out that your parents and adults and guardians know what they're talking about, give them a break and tell them things. Kevin Powell. Chase Young. Erica Davis. 
Thank you. 